talk about turn nine, where I think we're going to get some new time that round there as well, judging by the state of it. So this track, cooking under the Malaysian sun, or being soaked. Out, and we're away for the Moto2 race here in Malaysia at Sepang International Circuit. Look at Brad Binder, that's a lightning start from Brad Binder on the KGM, down into Turn 1. There will be no one that passes him on the brakes, that is for certain, even at Turn 1 of the opening lap of this 18 lap, 62 miles then. Binder out front. And then it's Alex Marquez perfectly placed at the moment. Big feel for Marquez, he's not getting tangled up in other people's uh, accident or fight. That's what we've seen so many times. In Australia, he was whittled back down through the pack, and I don't think we're going to see quite the so same thing here. Across the grass and the back shot. Big time. He must have got tangled, hooked up with someone there on the way out of turn three. Just what he would not have wanted. So Sam Lowe's then from row three in his 90th Moto2 race. He's just found himself running down the grass. Meanwhile, back at the front, there is Tom Luty. You know this man will have great late race pace. Will the motorcycle, will the tyres at this uh, heat that we've got here. Speed up versus KTM. Bit of action going on there at the moment. That's uh, Gigi and Antonio, but out front is the KTM. But Brad Binder with Alex Marquez in behind him. Xavi Vierge has come to play as well. Xavi Vierge, second row starter, fourth place qualifier. The other Australian Galicia Mark VDS machine. Brad Bender making his intention clear on this opening lap. That jump from the line, the break into turn one, immediately dropping the hammer. He's trying to put a little bit of daylight between he and Alex Marquez. He knows, he won't know it's Alex just yet, but he knows if he gets to the front, he had the pace throughout free practice to potentially run away. Moto2, Moto3 World Champions head to head for the Moto2 World Championship. It's got a nice ring about it, but Tetsuna. Nagashima there to play as well as we head down the back straight and down towards turn 15, the final corner, the handpin with that great big hump of an off-camber piece of tarmac. Look at the way he backs it in. Great, and that's sucked in Alex Marquez. Lucky it did as well, Tetsuka Nagashima, but uh, Marquez will have squared that off and been able to drive straight back under him. But that's what the likes of Brad Binder and his style does to you. Yeah, it kind of sucks you into Where's he going almost? <laughs> you get target fixation, and Brad, Brad Binder just clears off on a line that no one else seems to ride on. Exactly. Brad uses the rear wheel to scrub a little bit of extra speed off the way he drifts into the corner, whereas Alex Marquez keeps it a little bit more in line. The grip from the rear tire then pushes the front. Oh, and what's that? That's oh, Moe Ben Schneider. Moe Ben Schneider. Schneider that's gone down there. The, the tall Dutch dude has hit the deck. And uh, turn 15, that's the final corner on the track at the hairpin. I think that uh, yeah, he's done that pretty much on his own. Might get hurt as well, so on the brakes. When he clipped someone on the way in there, we couldn't quite see from there, but back at the front, which is where we want to be on this. Uh, commiserations to Bo, hopefully he'll be OK. It is Brad Binder versus Alex Marquez. This could be one of those kind of wars of attrition. Yeah. Who's got the tyre towards the end? Digi's been Digi. down as well. So, um, Fabio, Digi and Antonio at turn four. It's a bit real corner to have a few people down the road this weekend and uh, certainly in race conditions it has with that heavy fuel load and that rookie of the season battle that rages on Fabio Digi Antonio currently ninth in the championship just ahead of uh, Nea Bastianini but if Digi can score a few points here just to keep himself in uh, give a little bit of breathing space to go into Valencia Binda Marquez that's your two. Xavi Vierge having a good ride here, but watch out for Luti. Luti is on by 12, and uh, we're on board with him now. He's looking to try and deal with Xavi Vierge and get to the front as soon as he can, but you know that Luti has great race pace as well. Late race pace, 28 points the difference between Alex Marquez and Tom Luti in second place in this championship. And if Alex Marquez drops the ball, you know Luti will be there to make him pay. There was that uh, run on as he followed into the final turn your race leader, Brad Binder, tried to break at the same point as Brad. Maybe on the opening lap, you probably would have been better just having <laughs> half a yard uh, in discretion. Yeah, it looks like Alex has settled down on this lap, though, and he's actually got a little bit of a gap to Tetsuda. So as long as he knows that Tom Ludig's back there in fifth place, this is enough to, to win the championship. And then they have Bastianini. He's took himself out of contention as well for that Rookie of the Year <laughs> title. So Fabio's gone off lately at the moment.
<laughs> but anything else can happen. Almost exactly the same kind of crash. And, uh, he wasn't going to let go of it, was he? No. Unwound himself to get back on the thing. Uh, Miguel Oliveira held the race lap record uh, from 2017, 206.954. That's gone. It's 205.8 already. When first time we've been trying power around here, of course. So that gives you some indication of just how superior the Triumph three-cylinder 765 motor is, certainly in a straight line and in grunt terms. Around here, you need grunt. Grunt works out of some of these corners. So already the race lap record has gone. We saw the all-time lap record go as well. Brad Binder broke it 204.7 in uh, practice. Oh, Jorge Martin now at turn four. Turn four. Get out on those. I don't know what they painted it with or what quite is the transition from tarmac to curb. And anybody that's touching that curb is having a problem. Here comes Lucci then on the air, hey, at turn nine. Needed to get that done, didn't he, Lucci? Needed to get into a challenging position for the front three because they're just beginning to break away a little bit here. So now wait for Lucci to wind himself up. The professor will start working on this one. You can see Alex Marquez just getting into a rhythm and he knows he's got to match that. So He's got a little bit of a gap to make his way across to Nagashima and then try and claw back onto Alex Marquez. He wants to keep this championship alive. 28 points, the difference. Back to Tom Lucci. A further five back is Brad Binder. So 33 points off the leading man. And right now, Alex Marquez is sitting very pretty. Just looking back down through the order, Jake Dixon up to 20th. So. It's been a strong first two laps for him. He's looking strong there in just ahead of Joe Roberts. Sam Lowe's just behind that, Pacini behind him. So really strong opening laps. Down towards turn one. New tarmac here at turns one and through turns two. So we've got a bit of new turn, tarmac round at turn 12. And you heard Neil Hodgson talk about turn nine, where I think we're going to get some new tarmac round there as well, judging by the state of it. So this track cooking under the Malaysian sun or being soaked under the Malaysian rain. Either way, it's extreme. Yeah, it does have a hard life cycle here. The, the heat is intense, the sun is intense, it gets a lot of use here. Pre-season testing, they used to come here twice, three days at the start of February, three days at the end. That'll be reduced ever so slightly next season, but it's a, it's a great racetrack. And they did get a new surface in 2016 and a little bit of patchwork since then, so it's in good condition, just a few corners maybe need a little bit of attention now. It's amazing how much work this track does have. Every time we used to come here in testing, it looked uh, like it had a lot of stick from cars and the like that are tested here as well. Here's Lucci right on the case now. So Tom Lucci with Vierge again. He's not able to dispense with uh, Xavi Vierge. Xavi Vierge doing a really good job for his teammate who would be world champion. Of course, Vierge's job here is to interfere with Lucci, who is the main challenger just to Alex Marquez's title hopes. He'll have had the dog from team manager Joanna Levy. Just if you can, slightly hinder Tom Lutey on the way through and then he help your do. teammate out. <laughs> and he's doing it because Lutey's had to work to get in front of him again. And uh, you can be sure that Xavi Vieja hey, is in the lunch. Oh, hang on, Binder makes the mistake. Gets it out wide and that's let Alex Marquez through nicely. Julia Marquez, dad of the Marquez brothers, wipes his hands. And it will be sweat, not from the sweat, from the heat. It'll be from nervousness, I would suggest. Right then, Alex Marquez has got the pace to win this race. He's had it all weekend. He's looked quite, well, unruffled, I would suggest. And now that he has no one ramming it up the inside, Brinder has dropped behind Tetsuta Nagashima as well. So uh, these two can find a way as vital. It's been a long time coming. People question whether the Triumph might suit him. It has. He couldn't do it on the Honda power unit. He's going to do it on the Triumph power unit, surely. Tom Lutie right now, all he's doing is waiting for a mistake in front. He's just doing what he does, hitting all of his marks at his pace and waiting to pick up the pieces should there be any come his way on this last lap. Unfortunately, you can see that gap just creeping out. Alex hasn't relented on this final lap. Pushing through turn three, spinning that rear. The bike was bouncing. It's the best way. Don't roll off too soon. Just keep that focus all the way to the final corner. It's about pushing. Sometimes your concentration drifts, just like it is the rear wheel. Sometimes it drifts if you don't keep hanging it out, if you don't keep pushing. And once it starts to drift, once your focus starts to move around, and of course, when you're tired like this as well, remember this is debilitating this heat. They will have lost a couple of kilos in sweat. 
When you get to that point in the race, that's where fitness, that's where training keeps your concentration up. Concentration is everything at this point in a Moto2 race, in a MotoGP race, and in a Moto3 race, for that matter. In fact, in any race, yeah. it's where it absolutely counts. Fitness and concentration are linked. Brad Binder is supremely fit. He's got this race in the bag. Alex Marquez has only a couple of corners to go now. Alex Marquez is looking like he is going to be the 2019 world champion. Brad Binder, as much effort as he's put into this, he has done it all right to take the 25 points from the front. Tom Lucci will have to wait until next year to have another go at it. Brilliant Brad Binder hits the last corner. Alex Marquez is going to be the 2019 world champion as he follows the brilliant South African to the line. It has been a South African weekend and he has just taken the Moto2 race. But the world champion is Alex Marquez. He knows it. His brother Mark knows it. And celebration of pit wall.